We're now going to look at a new type of function that you may not have seen before. Um, and these are called piecewise functions. And the reason why they're called piecewise functions is because on different part of their domains, um, or different pieces of their domains, they use different output formulas. So it's going to look like different graphs kind of all put together to make one graph. Okay, and this is what they look like. So it says f of x. And this is telling us that for, we over here it tells us for what part of the domain. So this means for x less than zero, which will be everything to the left of our y-axis, we're gonna graph the line 1 fourth x. Then for x greater than or equal to zero, so for zero and everything greater than that, for all those x values, we're gonna graph the line x equals two. So let's look at just this top line for x less than or less than zero. So for all the x values less than zero for all of these, which I won't leave that on there, we're gonna use the line. So we'll have x and then we'll have one fourth x. Now we're gonna start with zero and since this says less than zero, we're gonna have to put an open dot here because it's getting close to that, but we actually don't do this for a zero. So one fourth times zero will just be zero. So we'll have an open dot at the origin. That's a pretty big open dot. Okay, now let's pick something. We need something less than zero. Um, that's easy to plug in. Let's use negative four because if we plug in negative four, one fourth times negative four is negative one. So we're also gonna plot the point negative four, negative one. And one fourth x, um, that's a straight line, so we can just use those two points and draw the straight line that's going that way. Now we're not gonna draw anything where x is greater than zero yet because this is just the graph for when x is less than zero. Okay, now we wanna draw the part for when x is bigger or equal to zero, so everything this way. That's just meant to be that part of the graph. Um, that's not actually the line. So x plus two, so we'll make a new table for when x is greater than or equal to zero. So we'll have x, and then we're plugging it into x plus two. Now, since this is the greater than or equal to, we'll actually make a closed dot where zero is. So if we plug zero, zero plus two, we get two. So we'll put a closed dot at zero, two. Now let's pick another number. This is again gonna be a straight line. So let's put in one and one plus two is three. So we have the point one, three. So we have a straight gaunt line going that. So that is the graph, it's in two pieces. Um, remember for a function, it should always pass the vertical line test. So you should never have graphs that kind of overlap along the x-axis. And that's why we, uh, where the points where they do change will have an open dot um, and a closed dot. So, this says find f of negative eight. That means we wanna plug in negative eight. Now we have to be careful with piecewise functions because we have to look, okay, does that fit into less than zero or greater than or equal to zero? And f of negative eight, negative eight is less than zero. So f of negative eight, we're gonna plug it into the top line. One fourth times negative eight, which gives us negative two. So f of negative eight, is equal to negative two, and you should never get more than one answer when you plug in a value. Then we want f of five. Now five is greater than or equal to zero, it's bigger, so we're gonna plug it into x plus two. So we'll have five plus two, which is seven. So f of five is equal to seven. Okay, now we're gonna graph one more. So this one says g of x is equal to negative three minus x for x less than or equal to two. So I like to make a little dotted line where we're gonna be changing. We're gonna be changing at two. And then it's just equal to one for x greater than two. So let's make a little chart for x less than or equal to two. Let's plug in two first. So we'd have negative three minus two, we would get negative five. So at two, we're gonna plot negative five, and since that's x less than or equal to, the equal to part's there, we're gonna put a closed dot. Now let's pick one other point less than two. Um, zero is less than two. So negative three minus zero will just be negative three. So zero, negative three. 
and that gives us our line that's going that way. Now, for x greater than 2, we just plot the point 1, which means for every value we put in, we would get 1. So it's actually going to be a constant function. And at 2, it's going to be an open dot because that's just x bigger than 2. And it's 1, so it's going to always be this constant line, that horizontal line.